Malik Yoba loves all women. Dave Chappelle talks women's rights. Women have their cake and eat it too. It's been a long time coming and so much more on today's World Star Weekly. Stay tuned. Tune into Black Hollywood Live, the world's first digital broadcast network devoted entirely to urban entertainment and pop culture. Tune in right now. World Star. World Star. You hear that? Run. Yeah. No, you hear the saying, pull out your yeah. phone. <laughs> you hear World Star Run. Welcome to World Star Weekly, where we break down and take down the best and the worst of World Star viral clips each and every week with fun but real discussions that need to be had and the people who keep the commentary colored. Is that politically correct? It is today. It is today because <laughs> I have the one and only Rochelle Pollard in the building. Come on, somebody. Give me a little snap. Yo, you get snaps. You get snaps. Look, 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 look. I am so happy to be here with my friends. Yo, Tehran is here. Listen, I'm going to be hosting and paneling on this as we talk all the best and the worst clips on World Star this week. We Absolutely. have so many things to discuss. This week on World Star Weekly, we talk kids saying the darndest things, dancing with myself. Uh-oh, trust me. Scoot over. You're in trouble. New York undercover comes out from under the sheets. Chappelle show, that's going to be a topic in itself. Let them eat cake and ending with something positive as we do each and every week. It's been a long time coming. I cannot wait to get into that discussion. We're coming off a wonderful, viable weekend. I hope everyone's weekend was well. We love to hear from you in the comments below. Please stay telling us if you have clips, if you want to show clips, if you're about those clips, let us know. But when you hear a world star, run. Here is the thing, Rochelle. I don't know. Last week was great. Yeah. We had we had our own discussions about clips. So Absolutely. We all voted this clip in. 16,156 views. Uh, this this clip is about a kid saying the darndest thing to her own grandmother. Okay. Now She was smelling something and it needs to be said out loud. I mean, here's the thing. I don't know how you communicate with your grandmother, but I... I felt for this kid. I felt for her. For the kid. I thought you were going to say for the grandma. No. The grandma, I understand her feelings being hurt, hurt. No. Because as I am somebody who do hear it as well, I'm a side, so hit me up if you need some box sprays. But I would never <laughs> smell like that. No, I'm well, sorry. You, my mom also We don't even know that. how she felt. We don't know how she smelled. But, okay, let's watch the clip. Let's, it, let's introduce it. this clip. It's a short clip. Oh, don't cry, baby. Please don't cry right here. She's getting her hair done. You know, okay, yes. She's going to she be fussing at me, and it is what it is. But all I want to know is, why you always fussing? So she asked her. When I do your hair. She asked her she's, opinion. And she's looking. What stink? You trying to say I stink? Oh. Respectful. We're about to go bathe in a minute. She hit her with the yes, ma'am. That's so, her. That hurts honesty, my heart. Honesty. Honesty. Is it the best policy? Absolutely. As a female, you should know because if you can smell, if somebody else can smell you, that means that you can smell yourself, and that is female tip one hundred and one. Sometimes you go scent deaf when you just it's a it's a scent that's always around where you're not aware of it because it exists around you so often. However, other people do. It happens when you go in and out of a room where now you've reset the fragrance and then you walk back in and you're like, woo. But you still should be able to smell yourself. Okay, I understand that she's used to it, but you know that your legs is open with your nightgown. What may or may not have underwear. So it's easy access. And then she had the nerves to scoop. That ain't right. She didn't have to do that to that young lady. Kids no. say, the, how, how old do you think she is? The little girl, she probably is a solid five to six. I thought maybe seven years old. And, I, and you know what I appreciated the most? The yes, yes ma'am. Ma and that's showed the honesty. That means that she should have got up, let go of that ponytail, and took a shower. She was feeling it. And, and I'll tell you something. First of all, getting hair done, especially when it's black hair, takes a long time. It's Absolutely. not easy. It's not, and it's not the most relaxing. <laughs> It hurts. So imagine sitting on the hard floor with somebody between your, you between someone's legs and you smell that and your hair is getting pulled. Come on, Pulled, baby. pulled too. Pulled, he, pulled. Because those look like tight braids. They was. You seen her. She was, you know, she that's, was you know when it's really tangled when you got to hold it and then hit the bottom. And brush because you, get because get the you roots. can't, you don't want to get the roots. Because then you pull, pull out their hair. That's exactly. the healthy way is holding it and then doing it like that. But the fact is, is that as a lady, she's been on this earth more than 15 years. Meaning, because that's when you really start smelling yourself. High school, it's like, okay, your scents start messing up. But she's been on this earth time five of that. Come on, baby. The young lady shouldn't have to tell you about yourself like that. She, okay. Have you ever been in a situation where you've smelt someone? Absolutely. And, and I still remember each and every one of them. That scent, I remember high school cheerleaders. It's interesting you say that because, you know, when it comes to memory, scent is the number one trigger. 
a lot of people don't realize that, especially when it comes to females. Scent Absolutely. is the number one trigger. So that's why I'm always like, right after break, before I came here, I ran home, made sure I got it together because I'm a hugger too. So I don't need you to be like, dang, y'all smell real show when she came to the studio. No. Would you like it if someone told you when you stank <laughs> yes <laughs> absolutely um well i'm more of the i'll tell you before like y'all i'll walk in like y'all i just came from the gym you know what i'm saying hold on i was a mail carrier so every time i walked in the house and we had like a house full of people i used to be like no hugs you know i just ran from dogs like you know i'm gonna let you know because like i said you would smell yourself before somebody else did so i would wouldn't really have somebody to tell me okay uh, has it ever occurred to people that okay I don't know how to say this in the nicest way, but old people sometimes smell. Is that politically incorrect? Did I just say that? I don't know. You know, I wasn't not, I don't to want to be ageist. With... I don't want to be an ageist, yeah. but there is a certain age that hits, and then you have the old smell. It's kind of like that, you know, that tin box that's like a cookie box, and then yeah. you open it, and it's got strawberry candy that nobody knows where that <laughs> yes, came from? Yes, yes. That's a, that's a thing. It's a thing. That's a grandma uh, thing. I don't know. I don't know about, because the grandmas are getting younger now, so most of the grandmas I know smell like Victoria's Secret. Yeah, some grandmas are younger <laughs> than their daughters. I'm like, how are okay. you at the club and your daughter's out? Period. She, she's, she's home. You so, I don't know. at the club. I don't know about the old smell, but at the end of the day, we all have a vagina. Not you, but us females. We have it. You it don't is know your my duty. life. <laughs> Let's get into the next clip. So that clip at 16,156 views is called Keep It 100. Why she always fussing when grandma do her hair. I don't want to be right here, dot, dot, <laughs> dot, it stank. That is the title. I don't title them. I don't write the rules. I just read them. Let's get into the next video clip, 67,675 views. This one comes in, and now this is a, this is a person in the street. This is a man living his best life. It's carnival time. He's living his worst life. Come on. Jeez. He is in the street dancing, having a great Get time. He's got the flag. He's got the Jamaican Ooh. flag on him. He's in the street dancing, getting it. But you and can then hear a car that. comes yeah. and just hits him. I mean, I hits, I hits him. Hits him. Just sprinkle some crack on him. He'll get right back up. I don't know. <laughs> the way that hit, hit. And it's like you heard him from like, you know, a cool couple of feet away that he was like gunning from. Oh, my God. It. I feel like that actually was done on purpose. There's no way you didn't see him. I don't know who I'd be for him or Jamaica, but he came for it. He did, Because he's in the street. He's clearly visible. He's in the street. By himself. By himself. With dancing, a loud flag. And the car sped up. With the lights on. If you heard if you heard a screech, like a, a stop, like, Arr! Yeah, it was Either accident. that or, or this person was literally on their phone. This and he don't care because it was people, were, they were out on the street. They're clearly videotaping. It seems like, I know it's carnival time for us, so it seems like it may be carnival time wherever he may be. Come on now. What's up? I, I don't know if it was done on purpose or not because we don't know what yeah. happened after this video. But yeah. if it was done on if it was done on purpose, this actually kind of makes sense. If it wasn't done on purpose, what TF were they thinking? Like, yeah. This is why you can't text and drive. This is why you need to pay full time and attention when yeah. you're driving. Because that man looked hurt. Like, he was dancing. I guess he's crazy legs now. I mean, he's, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm not laughing. Yo, <laughs> he's definitely, he was in the street dancing, which, of course, we shouldn't be in the middle of the street dancing, but it's carnival time. Yes, I was about to say, like, don't ruin the vibes like that. Not yeah. you, but it's just them. But, I mean, most guys in that car that I would see, like, on Crenshaw or something like that, they do be doing extra. So, you're right. It may not have been on purpose. You know, he could just, that's how he goes off when he sees the green light. But, come on, bro. I bet you he wishes he was done. Ducking that fade. Not everybody can duck the fade, but he, he go. definitely got, the fade. He got hit. Uh, we do have Steph Sabra in the booth holding it down in the back. And also, I want to thank each and every one of you for participating in the show. Comments galore. Please let us know more. If you want to be a part of the show, it's very easy. You are a part of the show. You are, if not as much a part of this panel as each and every one of us, even more so. So comment below. If you're on iTunes, subscribe, share, give us five stars. Write comments so we can boost to the top. Let's talk some World Star Weekly, and we know what World Star is all about. You know, with these views, a lot of you watch. Absolutely. Period. I mean, you said like sixty thousand. Come on now. We still watching it back like it's early two thousands. Of course, and and it's all look. I don't know what's so intriguing about things happening to other people. It is because you, you're you curious. Like, if you've never seen someone get hit with a car before, that's something that you want to see how it looks. I don't want it to happen, but... but you're curious to see what I it looks like. I want to see what it is. This one was 
curiosity gone awry. Now, we're going into a clip Whoa. that has 87,224 views. Wow. This is when white privilege goes wrong. I was wondering where she was from, so I'm glad you said that. Oh, she's definitely from white. <laughs> it felt like her friend was like Hispanic, that's why. Now, here's the thing. She was on a scooter and she got arrested. A lot of people don't realize that when a motorized vehicle or any vehicle, uh, even a bicycle, when you're on the road, you are now in a vehicle. Bicycles are subject to all the rules and laws of vehicles. So if it's a stop sign, if you're on a bicycle, you can get a stop sign tickets. A lot of kids in college wow. find that out because they run these stop signs while they're on bicycles. And now with the scooters everywhere, everyone's yeah. riding these scooters and not realizing there are laws that they're supposed to abide by. People can get tickets for not wearing their helmet. What? If you're running red lights, you can get a ticket for that. And of course, this young lady gets a DUI mm. on an electric scooter. I don't know, Rochelle, have you ever been on one of these scooters? Every time I'm lit, and that's why this video scared me. Because it's just like, I do, I do the same thing that you would say she had did. You know, you come from a bar, it's like, I don't want to get in my car. We live in LA, we're down the street by the beach. Let's get on a bird and fly away, you know? But I never knew that you can get a DUI. So I was really mad when Especially I when this. you're acting reckless. So let's watch this clip of a police officer arresting a woman for a DUI on an electric scooter. Gonna introduce to our city? I know. No, I'm actually just trying to keep you safe from driving the wrong direction on the roadway. So she was going the wrong so way. So if I fail this, I'm gonna get a DWI? Are you joking me? No, Look at me in the I'm eyes not. and tell me. I cannot fucking Look at me in the eyes. She I'm is very upset about this. Because I don't want to drive drunk. And you're gonna give me a sobriety test? Absolutely. There I That's go. funny. Okay. She thinks she's doing the responsible thing. It's so ridiculous thing. right now. Like, why are you doing this to me? Yeah, look at me. That's why I really watched this whole video. Well, if you don't want to do them, then I'm being a force to place you under arrest. Absolutely, yes. Okay? <laughs> okay. Now she's acting Dude, he's a fucking dickhead. Have a seat. Don't <laughs> out. Where is that? Fourth and Roma. Fourth and Roma. Yes, fourth and Roma. So that's her friend who has to come and bail her out, obviously. I'm in jail because I'm a fucking criminal for riding a fucking scooter and down the route. Now. Oh, my God. That's, Okay. Do you think she's wrong for what she did? Is the police officer wrong for what he did? I believe that the police officer was really awesome. He was really chill. You know, he talked to her. He informed her exactly what was going on. So I was taking heed to everything he was saying. He was saying that it is a motorized vehicle. You know, you can hurt someone. You can kill yourself or hurt someone because she was in a one way in the wrong way. So I totally understand that. I believe she would have got a warning if she kept her mouth shut. I mean, her mouth, yeah, her mouth shut. But she kept on talking and she started acting drunk. So she told him when he had her doing the walking test, he was just like, um, she was like, I got to keep my hands up. I can't do this. I've been drinking. And he was like. So, and she keeps incriminating herself. I've had two beers. I've been drinking. And in fact, that's why when police stop you, the first thing they go, they say is, do you know why I stopped you? Because right. once you answer them, you have incriminated yourself. Mm. That's why they say, do you know why I stopped you? And your answer is usually because I ran the stop sign, because I was going over the right. speed limit, because I ran through that red light. Right. The correct answer is, no, no officer, I, I have no idea. Right. My answer is, because I'm black, <laughs> like that. Okay. But that's not the best answer. <laughs> yeah. that's, not, that's an antagonizing right. answer. We 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 do not uh, facilitate that type of behavior. We do not. Unless you're a one. But <laughs> but no, absolutely. Um, I believe that she could have got away with a warning. But then she kept, like you were saying, incriminating herself. She kept on coming up with excuses. She a started acting reckless. She started calling him names. Um, she just started acting a fool. So therefore, it was just like, okay, I don't even trust you with this scooter anymore or for you to walk away because you're violent. So, sweetheart, you should, the safest thing you should do is come with me, you know. So I feel like they both, it could have just went two different ways if she just handled herself a little differently. I think that respect begets respect. And yeah. a lot of times, of course, there are times where police officers can be disrespectful and it's very frustrating. However, you can only control yourself. You can be respectfully declining their answer, yeah. declining their questions. You Absolutely. can respectfully do it. Do I feel that it's good to antagonize police officers? I'm personally not on that mind state no. where it's good right. to antagonize. I will be... We can't. I will be respectfully denying their question, their their questions, the whole way. In my, I just be like, I'll just let you talk and just okay. So what are we gonna do? We gonna go a warning or this? Cause it's not a fun situation when you're black talking to the police officer. So. But in this case, we saw she was clearly a white woman or yeah. a white ish. She right. She was passing of nothing right. else. So I feel like a bit of privilege came into play where she's just like. 
this, this is, is ridiculous. Yes, yeah. it happens to you as well. It happens to people. He had to repeat, this is real. This is happening. Yes. Yeah. So she was just like, I really have to take these tests. And I was just, I mean, it was just really a formative um, video. So I'm really grateful it came out. I'm sorry that you have to have a DUI, sweetheart. But I am grateful that I was able to see that because now I know moving forward, having a hot girl summer, when I have my, you know, bird, I'm just... You careful, have too many cautious. mimosas. You're gonna walk. How you know that? Uber, my Uber. We need to start. No, taking Uber. the bird is so much more fun though. Uh, no, that wasn't smart to say on camera, huh? What the bird is so much more fun? Why? <laughs> yeah, because you was like just Uber and I'm like, no, no do it the wrong way. I understand why people think that that's the right thing to do. They're saying I'm not driving. I'm yeah. being responsible. Yeah. However, those scooters are very dangerous. And in fact, when you look at the app, one of the things it says is do not drive drunk. I didn't see that. You check that. I know because we check so many things that we just, we don't actually read the things yeah. we check. Yeah. And I guess it is so new. So we do need, I guess, I don't know, like maybe it could be a sticker on there or something. I don't know. But I just never seen that stuff. But that is my fault because I'm so thirsty to hurry up and play with it that I'm not even looking and being cautious on what the rules are to be really safe. So like I said, I'm grateful for this video. Yeah. There are so many times where the police come off as the villain. But in this case, I felt like she was the villain Absolutely. in the situation. Absolutely. Where he was giving her as many chances as possible. I'm telling you. And had she simply said, oh, I apologize, officer. I didn't mean to go down the one way. Absolutely. Because there are times where people on bicycles or on scooters go down one-way traffic so mm -hmm. that oncoming, oncoming traffic can see them. And okay. so they take the one way, and that's actually a part of, of maneuverability. So mm -hmm. it happens a lot. If you notice late at night, the concept is people should be seeing you because they're coming on traffic, and that's why you wear these visible clothes or yeah. have these reflectors and things of that nature. Had she simply been... I think a little more responsive apologetic. and possibly just not even apologetic so much as understanding. Yeah. I understand where you're coming from, officer. I apologize. I won't do it again. Are you drunk? Honestly, officer, I just want to be on my way. <laughs> I like that. But I'm not answering. I'm not denying. Yeah. But I'm not answering your question either, which yeah. is perfectly your right. Can you say that? Of course. Okay. Here's a lot of things people don't realize about police officers. Police officers, A, they know enough of the law to charge you but not enough to convict you okay right that's why we have lawyers that's why we have judges mm -hmm. second of all so they get a cliff notes version of the law they are not lawyers mm -hmm. number two in a lot of cases police officers are simply doing their job yeah right so right. their job is to protect and serve but it's also to ensure public safety and a lot of times it's to get tickets because guess what pays for potholes tickets, tickets. those speeding tickets and those parking meters and all those things add up yeah. and we have public school yeah so Part of their job is to ticket people yeah. for breaking uh, and minor infractions. Yeah. That, yeah. that is part of their job. So here's another part of their job. Yeah. And thirdly, of course, it is most importantly to enforce the law. And yeah. this is a law. Yeah. Well, if you don't like the law, change it. But I also say that when people are, uh, when people are, are exercising their, their rights and police officers get upset, I'm sorry there's a Fifth Amendment officer. If you don't like it, take it up with the Supreme Court. Right. But if I don't want to answer you, I won't answer you. Okay. I'm sorry there's a Fifth Amendment officer, but if I don't want to show you my identification because I'm not currently engaged in a criminal activity and there is no there is no suspicion of it, I'm sorry. I don't have to. Yeah. I'm not doing anything. I'm in a if I'm in a passenger seat, if I'm walking, okay. if I'm if I'm not engaged in an activity in which you have a suspicion of a crime, I don't have to show you my identification or tell you who I am. And if I'm not being detained, I can simply walk away. And the truth of the matter is, if you don't like that, if you find that, well, if you have anything, if you don't have anything to hide, then why do you need me to get a warrant? Because that is my right. Yeah. Because that's my right. It's not, if you don't like not it, I do change it or not. the law. Yeah. The same way that, you know, there are times that you enforce a law that you don't think is right. Well, change the law. It's yeah. the same thing. Slippery slope. It goes both ways. Mm, okay, you better preach. That's right. Yeah. Somebody. Speaking of preaching, someone who actually did a lot of preaching this weekend at 151,346 views coming off the debut uh, Instagram post. The one and only Empire actor Malik Yoba, also from New York Undercover fame in the 90s, which was a big show. Yes. It was like the first hip-hop show on television yes. with minority uh, lead roles in this police role where they went undercover and, and it was just like drugs and gangs and hip hop. It was the show. Mm -hmm. uh, Empire actor Malik Yoba speaks on him being attracted to trans women. And that's a big, big, uh, big topic of conversation right yeah. now because in, especially in the black community yes. where we have a lot of, a lot of 
what we feign as masculinity yeah. and in, in turn becomes toxic masculinity yeah. where there's a lot of shaming and a lot of bullying, especially towards the LGBTQ community. Yeah. For this person to st step up, stand up and say, this is what I believe in. This is what, this I, is what I like. Yeah. This is, this is this who is I me. am. <laughs> I like trans women. Yeah. Because trans women are also women. That was a big step. Now, a lot of people are in denial and a lot of people are in disagreement. In denial about what? In denial about their own sexuality. I've been to, uh, I'm from Washington, D.C., where there was this big down low movement during the 90s going in the early 2000s. Yeah. And of course, we see a similar activity in, in Atlanta, yeah. especially, and I'm talking specifically in the black community now. Yeah. In the white community, I'm sure there's a big movement, but I'm not going to speak on it because I'm not related. I'm not as experienced in, in that yeah. community. But I know in the black community that one of the things you know that keeps coming up, Tiger keeps coming up with these rumors with trans women, and, and it denies his credibility. Uh, there are a lot of athletes that yeah. have a, attraction to trans women, and it comes up. Eddie Murphy got caught once with a trans woman. We're going to act like that never happened. Wow. Um, Richard Pryor talked about it in a stand-up. Uh, man, when it comes to the trans community, what I wrote down, definitely, I have no knowledge on that. It's so much to learn because, you know, you want to, it definitely when it comes, like Dave Chappelle was saying, when it comes to that community, it's kind of like I walk on eggshells because I don't want to offend anyone or, you know, speak on no one's behalf negatively. That's your life. But what I do believe is that everybody should be respected. You know, so what he did speak on here, what we'll be able to watch and see is that he apologized to his kids because people were being really nasty in their comments. And I think that is so foul and that's not okay. Like, you do not need to be sharing that negativity just because of somebody's lifestyle. I just watch it, I take it, and I keep it pushing. If I ain't got nothing nice to say, I ain't Kind of his baby it. mama's really upset because he released the information on his sexuality without uh, conferring with yeah, them. Yeah, talking with her. And she was upset because this is now affecting his kids. Yeah. My whole thing is I, I don't I don't support the I don't support the gay community. I don't support the LGBTQ community. Yeah. What I support I don't support the straight community. Right. I support minding your own damn business. Hello. So why don't you if it's not affecting you why do you care Speak so on much it. like. Why are you so interested in what people or who people are sleeping with? That's none of your business Absolutely. or who they're with. Like, you don't need to care whatsoever. If it's not affecting you, because I've met people who too. get so upset, who get so upset. And I'll tell you something about homophobia. To be very honest, homophobia is really men being afraid of other men treating them the way they treat women. Is that right? That, that's really what it is. Like, oh, my, oh, this guy might check me out. What, what do you do all day? Right. Like, what, what do we do all day long? Right. Hey, blue shoes. Hey, blue shoes. Like, that's oh. what you're afraid of. You're afraid of that. So I feel like a lot of that homophobia comes from that toxic masculinity. It was like, my masculinity is based on how many women I can get and how many women I can hit and how many women I can yeah. do this with. When that's not masculinity at all. That's not okay. masculinity at all. He just hitting us with it. He just you know, giving it to us. I'm serious. Maybe if you were talking about how many women you protect and how many women you were respectful to, that's masculinity. But there's nothing masculine about lying to a bunch of women. I'm sorry. At all. That's Swing not. Game. That's not masculine to right. me personally. Yeah, that is so true because man, he keeps it 100, keep it straightforward and let me know your intentions. Yeah. So I really And I, I lie to that. girls all the time, but I'm just saying Now that's I can't masculine. back you up on that okay, I'm Keep just it saying, 100 with me, know, baby What are we doing? You know, let's watch this clip Let's watch this clip and watch Malik Yoba, who is a very esteemed actor Yes. Uh, speak up My name, talking about trans attraction, imagine that, Malik Yoba um, Imagine it, that's Here's the thing uh, we're human beings, um, and we're all part of the God body. And so, unfortunately, part of our mechanism is that we need to judge and categorize and ostracize and vilify and demonize the things we don't understand. As a black man, I know what my, the stories my daddy told me. I know my history as a black man, what it meant for folks to tell you you don't matter. I don't believe that. I've never believed that of myself or other people. So he's equating the struggle so, toward that end of all minorities as one. Yeah. Washington, D.C., the Trans Visibility March on D.C. I will be there doing my love and trauma workshop, uh, the trans experience, and I invite you all to join. In this. And so it's going to take the efforts of everybody. You know, I've got three children, and I apologize to my own children because... My kids got some foul messages 
with folks thinking that it's okay. I don't so know why sad. people always attack the children. Something. Because it's an easy you target and you're weak. Something does not make it wrong. Why they don't go listen to, to that bars? If don't you don't understand something, something it doesn't make it wrong. Doesn't make it wrong. He says, "I don't know. I don't know everything, but I'm willing to ask questions." Absolutely. Just like I don't and that's exactly what I wrote down in my notes too about that. I love that line. French. Japanese. That's the thing about it. And and Musical. and the concept is of course that Malik Yoba is a very visible actor speaking and using his platform for this, which Absolutely. I'm uh, in complete agreement with. People will always say shut up and dribble. That's the yeah. that's the message when when entertainers, especially black entertainers, speak up yeah. on on viable social issues. Yeah. Just shut up and dribble. Right. No. Uh, use your platform yeah. for the progression of of society. This isn't about a liberal point of view. This is about a different point of view. Yeah. There's nothing liberal about trans women. That's not an agenda. There is no agenda. It's something that maybe we are not familiar with. Yeah. It's something that maybe we do not understand. But of course, if you look back, there was also a time where where something as simple as a mixed relationship was mm -hmm. something that people did not agree with believe in. And that was a in. big thing. And that was a big thing. Yeah. And still continues to, this to day, be, honestly. Right. I remember being a teenager. I mean, I'm 27, but I remember being like 17, 18, going to the bridge, and a lady with a clipboard asking us to please sign this petition because her whole family is in a disagreement with her and her husband. He was black. She was Caucasian. And I'm just like, what? Like, why are we talking about this? This is not the... Even back then, white women were petitioning. You gotta, you gotta show that so much love. Good for them. Good okay, you, at the Becky. bridge. Good in Culver for you, City. Becky. For real, seriously. Yeah. But yes, getting back to that bar, I love that so much. Just because you don't understand it does not make it wrong. And I do agree on that. It's just like, I just feel like, why don't people take that into heat in everything? If you don't understand it, like, learn it before you have a pin on it. You don't have no knowledge on it. I have no knowledge on trans um, community, so I would never speak negatively unless I want to, you know, question and learn more about it. You know? And people have a preference. And it's okay if it's not your preference, but it's also okay if it's someone else's preference my absolutely my ideology is mind your own damn business mm. and that's that's really what it is as long as it's not illegal i don't understand what the problem is you're not hurting anybody yeah. you're literally just not hurting anybody yeah. and, and another thing in the gay community it's known that only straight men sleep with trans women that's like the that's like their idea. The like yeah. no, it's it's a lot of straight men that end up with trans women. Yeah. And, and that's the thing. Who cares? Who right. cares who lives what type of life if as long as it doesn't affect lifestyle, me, I'm, I'm honestly. Cool. Yeah. I've always been like that. that. If you don't agree with gay marriage, more power to you. Don't marry a gay person. Done. We're done. Look yeah. how simple that was. Uh, you don't believe in gay marriage. Don't marry a gay guy. You got nothing to do with me. That's so. it. Who cares? Why do people still care? 2019 and people care about stuff like that and the environment's going to shit and no one cares. Come on, because what's up with Amazon Fire? I know. I wish we recycled as much as we hated. Let's get into the next next clip and this one this one's actually one of my favorite clips this is uh at 582,813 oh, sure views favorite. no it's my favorite because i find it very i think this has a lot of social oh yeah social uh social inherent quality like what? i think that i think this is this speaks to a lot of uh, racial equality this is a this is a clip that has to do with women empowerment i think that this clip has to do with y'all because all i see is a caucasian lady with a fat ass. I don't. I, I. I. didn't even notice any of that. He didn't. That ass though, cake never looks so good. Let's let's watch <laughs> this, and you're gonna want to tune in. If you're listening on iTunes, you're gonna want to watch the video clip and share on this one. This is a young lady. A young uh, lady. Uh, she is a young lady who's making cake. She's stirring the cake. She's 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 making that batter, and she turn around and make it clap a little she, bit. She's making it clap like that's a round of applause. Hey Ron, I am the producer, and I'm so done for with you. <laughs> Clip. That's abroad. This is World Star Weekly. I literally just. I oh my god! I feel like people are gonna think I'm some freak in the booth. Thanks I, a lot. Steph, it was. We know that it's not you. So I don't hard. write we the know. rules. I just read them. Okay. At 582,813 views, it was the top clip on World Star Weekly this week. I cannot ignore that type of visibility <laughs> and inherent. <laughs> So professional. I love Probably. it. He was like, I cannot ignore it. The I people cannot. want it's it. We're going to give it to you. Exactly. This is World Star Weekly. And new. No, look, if there are no fights, there's got to be twerking. I don't write the rules. This is true. Well, what I'm going to say about that is that she looked great. 
I'm not even gonna lie. You already know I'm all here for beauty. It doesn't matter if it's a male or a female. That's Just, true, Rochelle. Like, she looked great, but I was good. not expecting that, and I feel. But here's my here's my thing. This is actually a part of women empowerment as well. If she wants to do it, this isn't someone convincing okay. her to do it. If someone didn't tell, her, if she wants to do it, then let her live. Can hey, she Ron, live? Did I say there was an issue with her at all? No, or is it I an mean, issue with you putting this into the playlist on me. Why would it not be on the playlist? Here's my here's my all thing. Right, the whatever, thing that we have you. to discuss the most. This is this is why this is. <laughs> such an important topic is Why? and and this is this is something that's very real uh when did white women get ass like can we talk about that like what year was this do we not I was gonna say it does look ass? it really so we looks went from pancake to cake sculptra there it goes sculpture but i don't know her so i cannot say but it looks really natural it looks really great it looks really soft so we're and saying I'm we're jealous. thinking that's fake no, because I don't believe in saying anything. I will never say if you're gay, and I would never say if you got your body done unless you told me. So, she, are we? A, but what is your thought? Do you think that she? My thought those is, ass is that her body or? looks great, she and I'm jealous. Cheeks? And I'm jealous because she got a G string on, and ain't no love handles popping out, and I'm jealous. And yeah. I need to know what is your workout plan or I need else. to know who filmed that, and where do I sign up for that <laughs> job? I mean, I can. Uh, I, I I have no no further comment. Let's go to but the next great. clip. Next clip, 143,513 yes. views and, and, and 10 times that more on Netflix itself. We're going to watch a clip of Dave Chappelle speaking out on abortion. Of course, his new special just dropped and it's all the rave and all the controversy on Netflix as it got 0% on Rotten Tomatoes yes. because of the controversial tone and nature of his comedy uh, stand-up. So Dave Chappelle speaks on abortion and it all depends on who he gets pregnant. Let's watch this clip. Zero percent. Zero. I'll be real with you, and I know nobody gives a fuck what I think. Anyway, uh, I'm not for abortion. Oh, shut up, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> this is one take. Clearly he did all this, this special in one I'm take. I'm not for it, but I'm not against it either. It all depends on who I get pregnant. I don't care, I'll tell you right now, I don't care what your religious beliefs are or anything. If you have a dick, you need to shut the fuck up. On okay. Now, can we at least all agree on that? Yes. Now this you see the round of applause. The right to choose is their unequivocal right. They're of course being women. I believe they have the right to choose. I believe that they shouldn't have to consult anybody except for a physician about how they exercise that right. Gentlemen, that is fair. And ladies, to be fair to us, I also believe if you decide to have the baby, a man should not have to pay. Now that's a bit controversial. That's a little more controversial. Oh Lord! Clear. If you can kill this motherfucker, I can at least abandon him. I it's my know. money, my choice. My money, my, my choice. Money, my choice. I love it. And if I'm wrong, then perhaps we're wrong. Hello. And that's, that shit out for yourself. That is Chappelle at his finest, this uh, new special, Sticks and Stones, of course, making a lot of waves, uh, good and bad. And in this particular moment, as a comedian, the comedian in me applauded his... his His authenticity. I like the way you put that. I, I was going to say his also his comedic temperament. I believe that Dave Chappelle did this for us, the comedians, and not for the masses or the audiences. And and a lot of a lot of people are very offended. Of course, he spoke on a lot of other issues. But something comedians do, and I do this myself, is it's a spoonful of sugar. You say something poignant, but then you say something Hit explosive. Yeah. Exactly. And you say something and you push this envelope in order to get a reaction. That is yes. what comedians are supposed to yes. do. So the ideology that s comedians aren't supposed to or they're su supposed to subscribe to some form of political correctness, then if you don't like it, change it. You Absolutely. don't have to watch it. Which he did say. And my thing is, when it comes to freedom of speech, whether it's Dave Chappelle or even something as far gone as the KKK, I believe uh, if you do not believe in the freedom of speech for those you disdain, you do not believe in the freedom of speech.
Okay, I hear you. But what I was going to add on to what you were saying about his comedic flow is that I did love the way he did do something sarcastic, then he dropped the bomb, then he did something sarcastic, and I loved it. I loved everything about it because um, I'm a comedy baby. Like, I grew up, I love Comic View, like, all the way to today. I'm always at a comedy place. I love it. I love it. Um, but I have seen that people are scared now because it's such a sensitive time, and that irritates me because one of my favorite comedians is like Bernie Mac and he never held anything back but he also came up in a different time now it'd be a little different now it's sensitive and, and here's the thing I, I always have twofold just because you're offended doesn't mean you're right but on the flip side just because you're offensive doesn't mean you're right either so there is a responsibility for comedians because we are pushing this this agenda of progression in society and mm -hmm. civil society in which we have to be aware of the power that we hold and that yeah. words have meaning and and words have power. Yeah. And so when we at times pick the low hanging fruit, mm -hmm. the the easy joke, the mm -hmm. the racial safe. joke, not the safe joke. I'm mm -hmm. talking about the racial joke, the easy laugh, mm -hmm. then we're not doing any favors for anyone. We're not actually pushing the envelope, we're mm -hmm. just pushing buttons. Okay. And that's something people need to be aware of. So but when it comes to Dave Chappelle, he's a genius. This is one of my favorite comedians. He is Honestly, my favorite comedian. He's also one of my uh, favorite people, and he's a good friend of mine. And honestly, learning and watching him, you realize he is the GOAT. He is the yeah. greatest of all time. I believe that now there are a lot of other amazing comedians and who are legendary. But as of right now, this is the man. And his, he comes from a good place. His reasoning, his justification is there. A lot of comedians, they don't justify their comedy. Okay. They simply put something out there and it's offensive or explosive and they and no one holds back. Okay. Well, I know, this is my first time ever watching him, um, one of his stand-ups, I must say. I At first, when I was younger, I didn't like his um, comedic flow, as we can say. Um, but watching this, I was like, let me sit down. You know, it's definitely our job doing media. You need to stay updated. So I was like, let me watch it. Fell in love with it from the moment it started, the way he started with Prince and he intertwined it. It's just a masterpiece. You have to see it for yourself. But um, what I did want to ask you is what did you feel about that? Um, the main thing about this is the rape and, um, excuse me, not rape. Um, abortion. The abortion and um, having to pay child support. I, I think it's a funny thing to say. Mm -hmm. I don't know if Dave Chappelle actually believes that. I know that that's something that's kicked around mm -hmm. at times. There is some type of backlash from a lot of men which says, I don't get a choice in the pregnancy mm. and then I am there for now engaged but for the next 18 years of this child's life for mm -hmm. example right but at the same time it's like yeah but you could have saved a lot on this 18 years had you just spent three dollars on a condom had you just pulled out quicker like yeah. there's a lot of way getting yeah. pregnant is not an easy thing you have to kind of go out of your way to get someone pregnant do you yes you do actually this is not my opinion scientifically speaking getting pregnant is not an easy thing which is why so many people and couples have a problem with getting pregnant. It's not, it's not, uh, it's it not. It can a, be, but I feel like it's real easy too. No, it can be easy, but it's not. Like okay. it's scientifically speaking, it's it's like you're going out of your way to get someone pregnant. Okay. And, and, and the funniest thing to me is when people are like, I have boys that'll be like, I don't understand. How did this happen? Like, bro, you didn't understand? Yeah, maybe it's the immaculate conception. What do you think you don't... Like, right. what don't you understand? Yeah. What don't you realize what you did? Yeah. You know? What do you feel, even though I know as we were, you know, in agreements with Dave saying that, you know, guys shouldn't really have an opinion on that, but safe zone. When What's it comes to when it comes to abortion itself as a right, I, I am under, the, once again, the mind your own damn business mm -hmm. where we have... The, if if the people who were against abortions were also against things like the death penalty and the refugee camps that we have in the United States, since they love life so much and they were out there busy adopting kids, I would have much more of a sympathetic temperament towards their ideologies. Yeah. Because you're saying it's a principle. The principle is we love life. Yeah. But you didn't love life when it was Philando Castile in a car and got shot by a cop. You didn't love life when it was Ilian Gonzalez coming here from Cuba Come trying on. to save his life. And you didn't you didn't care about life when it's that death row inmate who's a person of color who yeah. was who was incarcerated uh, without full evidence. Okay. Right? Okay. You, you didn't care about life then, but when yeah. it comes to this, all of a sudden you care about life. Right. Well, if you care about life, then put your money where your mouth is. But yeah. they, they don't. It, it seems to be, a, a, and a lot of times, hypocritical. Yeah. And I understand. If it's not your religious beliefs, I understand. Yeah. Then it's not for you. If you don't believe in abortion, 
don't get an abortion. Right. But also, let's look at what abortion has done for society. Number one thing we know is pro- something as simple as crime prevention. Yeah. We know this because of the countries that have implemented abortion and legalized it. Yeah. Number two, women health. Let's not forget that black women in this country are a thousand times more likely to die during childbirth than white women. Yeah. Right? And that's a real statistic. And white women are still dying. And on top of that, uh, sometimes abortion is not just, oh, I had a, uh, it's an accident. Sometimes it's a health issue. Yeah. Sometimes wow. it's rape. Right. Sometimes it's it's all these things. And, and the law is one size fits all. And no one wants to talk about this because yeah. everyone wants to think everything is black and white. No, there's a lot not. of gray area. And just adding piggyback into that, that's what I wrote down from my notes, too, is just the rape. Like, I remember... Um, younger and I used to be like oh abortion that's really child well I was young at the time but it was just like if you're being irresponsible you shouldn't be able to use abortion like you're popping m ms or something like that be responsible but as I got older and then you did start seeing different situations like god forbid if somebody got pregnant or health issues or anything in that nature it's just like they deserve to be able to take care of, you know. If they there, are, to there are states right now where women are forced to give birth to stillborn babies because abortion is not a viable option in their state. See, that's just too much. And this is 2019. That's too much. That, that, that's what I mean. Roe v. Wade happened, and a lot of people say, well, she turned, changed her mind. That's okay. I, I accept that she changed her mind, but that doesn't change the law. Yeah. Yeah, I just each case is different, but definitely I I'm just like him. What he has said, it, I believe in abortion. It just depends on who I get pregnant, and that's the advice of birth that I would say for myself. God forbid, I don't rape is very serious to me, and it's it's a very sticky conversation. But you know, if God forbid if that was happening to any of my friends or something like that, they deserve to, you know, terminate that child. I mean, I don't know about those terms that's not what I speak on well it's not what I speak on the one thing I know is there are too many people in traffic anyway like bruh please can we please (laughs) can we have the purge once a year can we get rid okay let's go into our last (laughs) but not least clip uh, positive moment this is at 127,288 views this is a clip of a Mexican couple who finally get their citizenship after 25 years in this country. A lot of people don't speak on this situation. Citizenship is not an easy thing to achieve. Come on, preach. And honestly, as the as the son of an immigrant, I understand the value of being an American citizen and the fear of being deported. And I can only imagine what it must feel for this couple, but now we get to see it. 25 years waiting for this citizenship. <laughs> that is true joy. That is true joy. Wow. (laughs) I love that so much. Shout out to my mom and my sister for going through this. Today, September 3rd, my mom just aware us today in our group chat, in our family group chat, that September 3rd was the day my mom decided to leave Belize and come to America. Awesomely, everybody has their citizenship um, as of a couple of months ago. It's been a long, long struggle. And like you were saying, like, people don't understand the fear. <laughs> like, when I tell you I cried, you know, anybody who's for Donald Trump, that's your business. You know, you have that right. But that fear <laughs> that over went my family you know that ain't nothing nice so when they walked down and they had their citizenship as well i remember just bawling last year like it's so much joy so when i see these videos it makes my heart so happy because it's so expensive it's a long struggle and yeah you guys just do not know well for those who know no and for those who don't learn because it's so easy to say go back home or do it the right way but you guys do not know the process and you don't know what we may be running from or whatnot, but I'm super excited for everyone who got their citizenship. Here's like, my thing, and especially, I, I don't get into the politics of President Trump or not. Mm-hmm. My whole thing is people usually don't leave their country when their country of origin or their home mm-hmm. when it's a good situation. It's right. because it's something bad. Now, do I think everyone should be allowed in the United States or not? That's a different conversation. Absolutely. What I do know is that there are people that come here, they are illegal, and once they get that piece of paper, they are as much, if not more so, a part of the United States, it's all of us, because they earned it. Mm. And a lot of us just happen to be born into it. We were just, we just happened to have the, 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 um, chance the universal chance of being born in the country that so many people are trying to get to come on and the uh, and the truth is that no matter what 
is going on in the United States. The United States is honestly the greatest, if not one of the greatest countries in, in the world. The United States is amazing when you compare it to other countries. It only fails when you compare it to the United States itself. So believe in those principles and believe in those properties. Uh, truth, justice, and of course the American way, but the true American way. So thank you so much, all of you, for watching Roadstar Weekly. Roadstar. We appreciate each and every one of you. Of course, if uh, you want to find us, Rochelle, where can Please, people find you, you if you want to be found? Always find me. I always want to be found. Okay. You can find me on Instagram at Roach Baby. That is R O A C H B A Y B E E. Twitter, if you like to be more open minded. But yeah. That's where you can find me. What about you, friend? Of course, you can find me at I am Tehran all across the board because I am Tehran, literally uh, hosting and paneling on a slew of other Black Hollywood Live and After Buzz and all those great talk shows because your favorite TV shows are my favorite TV shows too. So until next week, uh, just remember the world is full of stars but also world stars. It's up to you which one you want to be. Until next week, world star! World star. On behalf of our PHL staff, we would like to thank you for tuning in to Black Hollywood Live, the world's first digital broadcast network devoted entirely to urban entertainment and pop culture. Check out our Black Hollywood Live YouTube page for even more great programming and amazing content. And be sure to subscribe and like our channel when you do. I'm your BHL host, Nakia Monet, and you can find me on all social media at Kiki Boom Boom or at Black Hollywood Live. Black Hollywood Live, Hollywood redefined.